What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I just finished episode two of uh, the Vince McMahon documentary. Uh, the first episode was titled Junior. I forgot to mention that. First episode was titled Junior, and it essentially talking about Vince McMahon Jr. The way they they structured it, you know him, you know following in the follow, you know following in the path of his father's footsteps. This episode was called Heat. And I like the wrestling terminology on why they're calling it heat. For those who don't know, uh, it's it's kind of a play on words in wrestling terms. Like when a wrestler gets heat, essentially, you know, that's when they're they're going through it. They're they're dealing with a uh, dealing with a a, a a a tough time or a struggle, whether it's in a match or you know a, a heel heat where you know a heel is trying to get the the hate from the crowd essentially that's what vince mcmahon was starting to go through with the allegations and the the steroid scandals that he was starting to deal with and him going to court vince was definitely in some heat um uh, with the the court of public opinion and the actual justice system at the time so um this episode focused on uh vince dealing with the the steroid scandals and the things that were starting to be uh i guess presented in the in the forefront in the in the light of the media and stuff like that and um they kind of broke down how vince was just getting cornered everywhere even though he had a successful company he was getting cornered in every situation in a sense where you know it was all happening at one time uh, they started off the episode talking about the introduction of Saturday night, Saturday night main event and how big that was for it to be on national broadcast television. Um, they also talked about how the wrestlers were literally working seven days a week. <laughs> they didn't have essentially no off days and how they were kind of getting burnt out and, um, they cut to Bret Hart talking about, you know, he would he wished that they would have given him more days and and had an opportunity to kind of rest up because back then it was all about being on the show, being on the card. If you was hurt and you had to miss time, you didn't get paid. That's how it was. So it's not like what it is now where there's guaranteed contracts, whether you hurt or not. It was if you missed out you if you was hurt you missed out on money so a lot of times people would essentially was working injured they were working in serious amount of pain because they didn't want to miss a payday which can ultimately burn out a wrestler over time but wwe was just cooking at an exponential rate uh, they were so over with the, the general public um there was a situation where jesse uh ventura was trying to get the wrestlers to start a union uh a union up essentially to you know something that could protect the wrestlers in situations where they're injured and they can't work and now they're missing out on money and hulk hogan ended up snitching he told about the meeting that uh ventura, ventura was going to have with a whole bunch of the wrestlers so hulk snitched and this is very important this is why i say this in the way they structured it on how close hulk hogan and vince mcmahon were they were very very close and they really portrayed that in this in this episode how close they were like vince was pretty much you know the mouthpiece for hulk hogan and hulk hogan with it would do whatever vince wanted him to but he also would have vince's back in the best interest of the company because let's be honest hulk hogan was the top guy so um they talked about how ventura was uh trying to get a union started up with a whole bunch of wrestlers and once um vince found out about it he pretty much told everyone if you go to that meeting you're pretty much fired and we're going to come back to that because there's a reason why I brought that particular part up of Hulk snitching to Vince. Because it's going to be very ironic how this episode it, how this episode ended with Vince and Hulk Hogan's relationship. How that kind of deteriorated. Uh, they talked about uh, WrestleMania 3 and how um, they uh, Vince wanted to get Andre the Giant to come back for WrestleMania 3. And this was even funny too. Hulk Hogan didn't know how the match was going to end. He didn't know. 
But he kept asking Vince, hey, what Andre say, is he going to do the job? And only Vince could tell him, like, well, I'm sure Andre will do the right thing. He didn't know. He legitimately didn't know that he was going to do the job. After he did the the uh, the body slam and the leg drop, uh, he said in the documentary he did not know if he was going to actually not kick out. Once, you know, the ref counted three and he finally kick, he didn't kick out, that's when he knew. But at the at the moment, he didn't know, which is very ironic coming from Hulk Hogan. And we know in his past political moves of not wanting to put people over, he was in a situation he didn't know if he was going to get put over or not. Um, so I thought that was very uh, funny as well. They also talked about uh, Vince getting backlash, a backlash from the uh, Sergeant Slaughter uh, storyline they were going with with him uh, um, aligning himself with uh iraq at the time uh, sergeant slaughter uh had pretty much aligned himself with iraq and hulk hogan was going to come back as the you know uh the triumphant triumphant uh baby face american to stop sergeant slaughter and uh a lot of people um felt like it was you know in poor taste because it was really happening in real time iraq and uh in america and the issues happening at that time and vince had been known to do that i mean he did it multiple times afterwards until if you guys remember that infamous situation with the undertaker and then the whole uh terrorist attack you know the terrorist group that attacked him and the network's like y'all gotta get nah y'all can't do this and they essentially got rid of one person because of it vince has been known to bring real life situations real life political war landscape situations into wrestling because it's a it's a tried and true method but you, the thing is it's the timing and the and the tastefulness of it vince would go to that extreme and uh, some people didn't like that. Some people weren't rocking with it. And this was starting to see the turn where people weren't a big fan. You know, people were losing the love for the babyface Hulk Hogan. Then we get into the steroid scandals. And Vince had openly admitted that he did take steroids. Because he's like, you know what I'm saying? I, I might as well tell the truth. Because essentially they had a doctor um that was pretty much prescribing steroids and selling them and vince said you know i've taken steroids before but i don't do it anymore and hulk hogan was supposed to come clean hulk hogan was supposed to come clean but uh he ended up lying like vince asked him you know uh you know vince asked him to come clean uh, i think uh hulk hogan was supposed to do the um i think he was supposed to do a show with uh, on arsenio hall and you know he was telling him he's going to talk about it and vince told him just tell him the truth so he goes on arsenio hall and he basically said i only use steroids like three times but i don't use them i'm not an abuser and then other wrestlers were like bro he's full of shit I personally gave him some steroids, so he essentially lied, and then it kind of made things even more worse that your top guy is out here lying about taking steroids, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like, all he had to do is just kind of be, just be truthful, like, you took steroids, but you don't do it no more, granted, a lot of people were taking steroids back then, yep. Arnold Schwarzenegger, all the people that was doing those movies, the the late 80s, you know, early 90s action film movies, those guys were getting jacked for those roles. How do you think they were going they were doing it in such a short time? Steroids. Come on now. That was that's what it was in the late 80s, early 90s. That that was the craze, steroid use. So now he, you know, he's starting to get more backlash. Hulk, you know, Hulk didn't really listen to him in that situation. And then this is where the documentary on this particular episode gets a little bit on the the more serious side. And I didn't even know these allegations happened back then. So apparently um, there is this reporter called Phil Mushnick and he does not like Vince. He even said it in a documentary. He he. He doesn't like him. He thinks he's a scumbag. And he made it his mission to put out pieces to essentially expose Vince. And around that time, most major news publications weren't pub talking about wrestling as, you know, they kind of looked at it, deemed it as eh, low brow. But 
he saw some things and then some people had hit him up and he was like, you know what? We may need to get this guy out of here. He he essentially was one of the first, I guess, I wouldn't call him a whistleblower. He didn't work for WWE, but he was one of the very few people that was actively trying to get Vince, <laughs> I guess you could say, canceled for that time period. I mean, he's one of the reasons why there was a federal indictment against Vince because of the steroid scandals and the steroid abuse. He was the main reason why that happened. Um, so Phil Mushnick made it very clear. Didn't like Vince McMahon at all. Um, they, they even talked about, um, the abuse of women, former wrestlers talking about, yeah, women was treated bad. Like women were treated like they were nothing. Like it was, you know, kind of discarded. They talked about the whole Jimmy Fly snooker situation and how Jimmy Fly didn't really get in trouble because, you know, it's, it's alluded that Vince kind of took care of the problem. So to keep, you know, Jimmy Fly, you know, wrestling because he was one of his top guys at the time. So he kind of was able to move some things around, which we've heard about that before. They also talked about Pat Patterson being a part of of this this group of individuals, group of executives that were coming after Ring Boys. Now, Ring Boys are uh, uh, basically... And I didn't know this was a thing, but basically back then ring boys were, you know, group of young, young men. They would come and essentially set up the rings and take down the rings uh, for uh, wherever city or town that they were in. And what the rumor was going around is they were being, you know, inappropriately touched and groped on. And Pat Patterson was one of the people that was listed in that. Now, um, because of what was going on around that time, um, they ended up resigning those executives. But Vince ended up talking to uh, Dave Meltzer and he was basically saying that two of them were guilty, but one of them wasn't. And he was talking about Pat Patterson. And basically, he said the only reason why, you know, Pat had to leave is because there's this this gay hate witch witch hunt because pat patterson was openly gay so he felt like there was this gay witch hunt for him and that's why he had to leave lay low for a little bit and then they brought him back and there was a wrestler on the documentary that talked about well pat patterson you know would always kind of grab on his on his johnson paws and he didn't like that shit he didn't like him because of that but there was nothing he can do one of the in uh, netflix producers was like well why you ain't do anything why you ain't say anything to vince and dude started laughing because he's like, bro, that's the lead booker. That's Vince right hand man. What am I gonna say? What am I gonna say? How I'm, wh who am I gonna who am I gonna tell? If I tell him I'm fired, it's either I deal with it or I go home. So it's it's crazy to know that maybe that was, you know, kind of what was going on. Like Certain people in being in charge, having that type of power, being an exec and being the Vince right hand man, if they ever felt like you were going to betray them, betray Vince, you know, he, they would tell Vince and you would be fired. The same thing that Hulk Hogan did with Jesse Ventura. The same thing. He essentially is like, nah, you're trying to start a union. Vince is pretty much my right hand man. Essentially, I'm going to let him know. That's exactly pretty much um what happened there so we we hear about that potential scandal with the ring boys but then things get even uh even more dicey or even more spicy however you want to say it when they talked about uh a former female referee the very first female ref uh, referee for uh wwf at the time rita marie as she uh as she went by but her name is actually uh rita uh, Sh uh shatter shatterton shatterton i believe i'm probably miss uh chatterton my bad i said shatterton chatterton reader chatterton but she went by rita marie and she was basically supposed to be the eye candy a female eye candy for you know wwe a female referee eye candy um but she had claimed that Vince McMahon had um, forced forced her or wanted her to give her oral sex. And when she did not comply, essentially Vince had, you know, the R word. Um, and he basically said, if you don't do this 
or whatnot, not only will I fire you, I will, you know, you'll be blackballed from the industry. And her story seemed heartfelt and, and very emotional. But guess what? Around that time, nobody believed it. Nobody wanted to believe it. Nobody wanted to believe it. Around that time, nobody wanted to believe it. So essentially, she was just talking and and nothing came from it. Like nobody wanted to believe it, you know, and that's a very big accusation. But no one at that time looked at Vince in that way. And, you know, they didn't want to believe they felt like she was just trying to get a money grab here. So, um, with that being said, you know, she, he's dealing with the R allegations. Then he's dealing with obviously the, you know, the, the federal, um, well, the feds pretty much coming after him with the whole steroids allegation that was spurred upon by Phil Muchnick and Vince uh, refused to plead guilty. So he said he's going to take this to trial and towards the end of this episode, it comes back full circle. At the beginning, they talked about the, the closeness between Vince and Hulk Hogan. It came back that, you know, Hulk was like, you know, it's time for me to hang it up. You know, it's time for me to ride off into the sunset. So that's what he did. And he told Vince that he wouldn't compete against him. Well, Ted Turner, WCW, they were obviously not competing on the same stratosphere as WWF at the time. But Eric Bischoff happened to be in a general vicinity where uh, Hulk Hogan was filming. And he was like, you know, trying to get Hulk to come back to wrestling. And Hulk was like, look, man, I got two kids now. I ain't trying to do, I ain't trying to work all these crazy dates. And Eric's like, nah, bro, we got you. And basically Ted Turner was throwing a lot of money, guaranteed money and work way less dates and that's essentially what happened and what's crazy is hope had a conversation with him told him like hey bro i'm not i'm not gonna go to your competition you know i'm gonna I'm a retire do movies i'm gonna chill you know and that's the kitten that's what it was but eric bischoff being a salesman ted turner having so much money like you can work less way less dates and we'll give you a guaranteed a million dollars a year million dollars back then was a lot and guaranteed it's not including anything else just guaranteed and you don't have to work as much so he took the deal and vince was hurt vince felt betrayed and this honestly became one of the 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 bigger reasons of why things started to happen especially when you look at what happened with uh brett and Brett wanted to leave and go to WCW and wanting to hold, win the championship, retain it, and then drop it the next night. No, you know, obviously there was other things that went into that as well. But his trust in the top guys that he deemed top guys or that was making him a lot of money, you can see it was starting. That's one of the big catalysts to start it to, you know, decline because this is someone essentially Vince pretty much catapulted hulk hogan into mega stardom with his ideas because everything that you saw that hulk did that was vince's ideas hulk just said it so when to find out that you're dealing with this case that you know this is you know dealing with this federal case you got people accusing you of you know the r word and now one of your top guys who i'm sure they considered each other you know pretty good friends you know I'm willing to bet, but one of your top guys that you figure would be loyal to you just jump shipped, end up jumping, leaving, thinking they're not going to jump ship. They jump ship to the other, your competitor. And now, not even that, the government forced Hulk Hogan to testify against Vince McMahon. And if he didn't testify and say what he wanted them you know what they wanted him to say there was a good chance he was going to get up to 17 years and he was granted an immunity so imagine all this happening at one time someone that you really pretty much put a rocket ship on and got him into the stratosphere is now testifying against you in the steroid scandal that's crazy and like like i said a lot of the details of this I've I didn't know. I'm sure you could have easily looked this up, but this I'm 
this is around the time I was just being born. Before I was born and just being born. So, you know, I'm I'm a baby. I don't know what none of this is. So for me, this is a lot of new information. And it's very crazy to see how the episode started with Hulk Hogan, you know, and Vince. They, you know, the dynamic duo to now Hulk Hogan going against Vince on trial. And these allegations um, that was being presented. But what was crazy and how the episode ends, and I'm going to end this. I don't want to take too much time. Uh, there was a statement at the end of the episode that said in 2023, so very recently, during a temporary lift in the statute of limitations for alleged cities of sexual uh, offenses in New York State, McMahon uh, paid a multi-million dollar settlement to guess who? Rita Chatterton, a.k.a. Rita Marie. That's telling. I didn't even know this. So he ended up paying her a uh, undeclosed, a multi-million dollar settlement. The timing of that is very interesting if you really think about it. Because he's dealing with a lot going on right now. I mean, the, the feds are coming after him again. The whole Janelle Grant situation and other people probably, probably trying to, you know, come up and say their piece. And he just does this essentially kind of on the low. That's very interesting. He ended up paying her out anyway. Now, the question always becomes, and you got to ask this. There's two ways you can ask this. Why, If you're innocent, why would you pay out? Why would you pay? Why would you do any type of settling? If you're truly innocent, and I'm just playing devil advocate here. If you're truly innocent, why would you pay out any type of millions, right? Two ways you can take that. One Either there may be some truth to it and he wants her to hush up and be quiet. Or two, maybe there isn't any truth to it. Maybe she was lying and this is more hush money essentially to keep her quiet, to not make his situation that much worse. So maybe she is lying and he's like, I'm going to give you a couple million. Shut up. Don't say nothing. I'm already dealing with some stuff. That could be the situation too. It could be. But either way, it's something to really think about, you know, because million, a few million dollars is not cheap to just get someone to shut up when in actuality there may be potentially some truth to what she may have said in the past. So I don't know. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about it. But, yep, episode two definitely dived in into, you know, this. Uh, him being in a lot of heat with a lot of different people. Um, very good episode. Very informative. And. The one thing I can say about this particular episode, Hulk Hogan ain't shit, bro. <laughs> Even though this is about Vince, Hulk Hogan ain't shit. He was a snitch. He was a suck up. And then he sold out <laughs> and left his mans high and dry. Granted, I get it. The government's coming after you saying, hey, you got 17 years on uh, knocking on your door if you don't do what we tell you to do i can understand most people folding in that situation but the fact that he did jump ship the way he did jump ship telling vince he wasn't gonna jump ship that's kind of that's kind of messed up but if he never does that we don't get the classic hollywood hulk hogan so i don't know man <laughs> i think i think a hulk is he's an interesting one bro he one thing about hulk he's gonna look out for himself but comment down below let me know if you guys enjoyed episode two um and let me know if y'all enjoying um the documentary series so far i'm gonna continue doing this pretty much for the rest of the day um i'm gonna drop uh this one um as you're seeing this uh, right after episode uh, one and then i'm just gonna be dropping them throughout the remainder of the week so i'm gonna try to finish the documentary up today and have all the videos kind of lined up for y'all and we can have discussions but i appreciate all love support road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace